Getting ready to go, Fujo. Yay. I think, you know, with this being a resale shop, I got the higher brand stuff, you know. So what Sun Kill Moon does is they teach the singer to just sing uh, and not worry about being an opera singer kind of thing, you know, completely. Meaning sing the voice that you have and don't really overdo it. But sing the story uh, is the, you know, singing the story is the most important thing, however it's written or whatever, you know. So it's just basically finding a voice and singing and going with the flow rather than trying to be Axl Rose or some opera singer. I don't think that's what he's trying to do. I think Mark Koslick is just basically trying to tell the story and sing the song and not a whole lot more. Now the band does a lot of crazy fancy stuff with acoustic guitars and they do all this classical um, instrumental sound stuff, you know. So it really does take off and it sends you to another place. It's an important band to check out. Now I know I mentioned Kevin Morby, also Sun Kill Moon. So this is one of my music little things, like flipping out about music, you know. We're gonna we're gonna green light it right here. So we got the green light. We got the green light. We got the green light. The picture is green lighted. Another selfish guy. Another selfish one up behind him. Three selfish buttons. Three selfish drivers. Right in a row. But oh well, I can be that one. I like the train. Beautiful. It's a beautiful train. The train is absolutely beautiful. So there's two types of lenses that are real popular um, that people use. There's a spherical lens, which the spherical lens, okay, there's a spherical, spherical lens. That was used by Kubrick because it was more natural. It was a more realistic lens. There's another type of lens we're gonna talk about later, but right now I'm focusing on spherical. What that allows the camera to do is pick up everything in the room clearly so everything is picked up at one time now there's other filmmakers that use different type of lenses that will blur partial parts of the surrounding area or the scenery or whatever you want to call it that's out there it'll blur parts of it and focus on one part but Kubrick always focused on everything because he saw it as more naturalistic and real. Right. so there it is it's called the Chop Shop. It's in Roanoke, and it's a mean place to play. Now, if Sun Kill Moon is brave enough, they'll play there. They could be killed, but they might get through it. I mean, if they're looking for death. But I say go for it. Play for poverty. Show up there. Be brave. Brave Americans. Show up there and play and uh, help poor fathers regain their children. I don't know if you can see way over here, but that sign is bent around that wire. It's basically like a four-way stop. You can kind of see it as an approach. I'm just trying to figure out how the hell that happened. I've got it on three times focus, so we're gonna see. You can kind of see it hanging off the wire. You can't see the name of the street, but it's off Front Street right there.
right. So it looks like um, we're on a detour going by Bayou Jacks and Cajun Grill. I had to go through Roanoke really quick to kind of vlog it um, earlier. And this F-150s, they're all failures. And they'll all uh, be without homes in 2030 um because they're burning too much gas this right here is the oak street food and brew and oak street food and brew i guess eatery it's a place where you can uh shop your food around so they have restaurants that go in there and they just advertise and people come up and buy their food because it's in an outlet so they switch out some of the restaurants so you have a shot trying to sell hot potatoes or french fries or you know sandwiches or something like that and they do have a place that you can play music so i don't know i'm still kind of looking for a live venue for linda and cole i was thinking about eventually maybe uh madison square gardens in new york if they'll take us um we could play with another band or something like that or i was thinking of maybe eventually coming back around and maybe if we go through dallas starplex and stuff like that eventually but um we're too good of a band to play small joints but we do we do actually will we will play uh you know for studios and for you know recordings and uh we don't really do dives we do big 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 shows okay it looks like the the water is blocking that one. It's dangerous to go down that way, so they have a detour. Um, we've been detoured to go straight to this neighborhood. So Waze is rerouting me in a circle to go through basically where the water is. But I'm going to follow these guys and see if it gets me to the next location. Because that bridge is shut down over there due to the water. And they're not going to let us go down that way. So this thing is going to be chirping. We're going to turn it down a little bit. There we go. Now I can't chirp. So I'm so sorry uh, throughout some of my... A second. Sorry that sometimes ways would chirp uh, while I was um, giving my orotation or my speeches. But, you know, it's just the way life is. So looks like we're going to get through here. I turned off ways and it just turned back on. So... It'll chirp a little bit more. Sorry about that. Hi, Mom. Um, but anyway, love y'all. This little segment right here is basically to show you how selfish people are. So you've got this kind of light go going here. He knows my light, my blinker. Okay, my blinker's turned on this way. And this guy, we're going to see how selfish he is. So we've got a whole backup going down this way. And we're going to see how if there's any grace left on and we're gonna hey he is gracious so it looks like he is going to give me the option and we are moving you can actually hear his truck going appreciate it just in case yeah, last second i'm gonna make sure i get in here Some artwork. I wonder if they're showing off artwork right there. I don't know. lot of traffic and they've got a uh, bridge closed it's actually underneath the bridge okay so you have a bridge that goes across where you go underneath the bridge that part is actually closed 
So it's the road that's closed that goes underneath the bridge. That's the part that's closed, okay? All right. So if we go straight here, this road will close and there's a bridge, a train bridge, okay? That train bridge underneath that is actually closed. And we've got to find a way to get around that. It's very, very difficult. interrupted what do we do when we when we get interrupted we go straight to the restaurant always the restaurant first yeah you can go uh and and, and drop off that other the food but just go straight to the restaurant okay you want to get situated get the merchandise first it's a theory now if they're right there and you get turned around yeah you can you can check but if you're like a mile or two miles away just go to the restaurant because they get impatient. And you want to go to the restaurants first, get the merchandise, which is the food. You know, I mean, you call it product or food. You can call it really anything. You get the food or... The, I say merchandise, it's like that thing, you know, get the goods first. Get the goods first and then go to the other area, you know, for the, for the, for the drop-offs. I call them drop-offs. Some people call them deliveries. I call them drop-offs, okay? I would suggest to keep six feet from all people because you're going to be around far more people than most, okay? You're also going to want to... I just got a new mask right here. You're going to want to have a lot of masks on order to cover the face, okay? Mini mask, okay, to cover it. As many that you can get, okay? That is what you want to do. We've got a full backup here because we got flooded out really quick. And be weary on the GPS when there's flooding, a little bit of flooding. Not a whole lot. I'm not saying it's crazy flooding like Katrina, but there was some flooding. So you have to be weary because it's going to spin you around. And it's gonna, it can get frustrating. There's nothing easy about any particular job, okay? That's all. If you're a lawyer, then you got to deal with all the laws of the judge. If you're a police officer, you have to deal with prison, right? Because that's the failure of a police officer. When a police officer fails, they go to prison. When a lawyer fails, you know, it's a little bit different. When a judge fails, they usually don't, you know, because judges lie and stuff. There's a really good uh, movie with Brian Cranston. Actually, it's a, it's a TV series. I'm sorry. Forgive me. You'll have to forgive me. It's a TV series, or it's a cable series, or it's a series of, like, little movies kind of thing. A series of shows about a judge that Brian Cranston is doing right now. I saw some of the early parts of it. I didn't like it as much as Breaking Bad. I'm going to be honest. I did not like it as much as Breaking Bad. But it's not too bad. It's, it's not too, you know... It's not, it's not masterpiece kind of Breaking Bad kind of stuff. But it's an interesting watch. I want to say it's like Showtime or, I don't know, something like that or something. It's some, some kind of thing that's out there that's showing. It'll eventually get on Netflix and all this stuff, but everything's going to be owned by Amazon anyway. But, but give it a try. I'm right now headed this way. So I'm at a seven minute stall. I could do some Shakespeare, but I'm going to show you this water falling down right here. You can see water falling. You can hear it too. It's 
so you can see the water. So when it's the Foo Fighters or Sun Kill Moon or whatever band braves it and comes to uh, the chop shop, there can be some construction. So you want to be weary, especially people that travel here to see them. Uh, you want to be weary because we want to have that poverty uh, music festival for poverty. We'll just do it that way. Poor Fathers will be part of it, but the Poor Father Festival will be part of it. But it, it, it's going to be a, a poverty. It's a it's a festival for people that are in poverty so that we can uh, help people eat because there's people out there that are in poverty and we want to do a music festival so we can get people out of poverty. The, the goal is to help people that are in a lot of trouble, okay? Like everybody's going to be in 2030. So we're going to do that music festival. And I say we do it real soon. So another important thing about Food for Friends or any app that you use, sometimes they change the names, okay? I don't know if Uber Eats does it or Postmates, but they'll change the name of the restaurant. Chili's does it and Dickie's does it. So it doesn't come up as the name of the restaurant. Now it will in the notes. In the notes it will do that, but it doesn't always do it uh, on every restaurant. So some restaurants it'll have the same name. This one, for example, it has some weird name that's not Dickie's, but it does say Dickie's in the notes. So it can be very, very confusing, very quick, and it's not on the map. So I happen to know where Dickies is located, okay? Because I'll go around looking for it. So it, it's not always going to give you all the information. Why they changed the name, I don't know why. Chili's does it too. They do like something pasta, some kind of pasta thing. That's not even, it's not even the name of a restaurant. And then you look in the notes and it says Chili's. So. I think it's a business thing. I don't know exactly why. If anybody knows why they changed the name in the app, let me know. Because it gets confusing. Now, pandas and stuff like that, they'll leave the name panda in the app. Popeyes, they'll leave the name Popeyes in the app. Same with Taco Bueno. Same with all these regular restaurants. But Chili's won't be Chili's. It'll be called something else. Dickie's isn't called Dickie's. It's called something else. It's not owned by a different business, I don't think. I don't know the exact reason why. Also, it's not on the map either. So you have to search it down. I don't know if these restaurants are going under or if they're changing their names and panicking or if they're just changing the names on the app or they're, you know, something else is going on within the app. They're owned by maybe another restaurant and they can't use that name, but then they use a name, you know, as a subsidiary or it's in the description, right? But it's in the description part of it. If you read the notes, not 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 on, my, not on my description. My description has my PayPal. You can leave my PayPal. On. But this is a description that's in the actual Food for Friends app that is fiction, meaning it, it, that app represents another company that I work for. Um, like, they're similar to Uber Eats and they're s similar to Postmates. So the good news is I did actually find... A Dickies and it re it readjusted, so it recalculated itself. So I am pulling up prominently, as the woo says, to Dickies or accordingly, as I say, because he butchers the English language sometimes with this Alfred Hitchcock crap. Anyway, I don't know. He's leaving Disneyland, going to California. Like, life must be tough. Oh well. We got the merchandise. Waiting for the Bluetooth. Let's see if it kicks in. So we got it. We got it picked up. We are headed back. Got through the rain. I listened to some of my werewolf movie ideas. I like it. I want to get that thing lifted off. So I want some good directors to look at it. Fincher. I think Fincher is a good director. I don't know if he would do a horror film like a werewolf film. I don't know if he would. But I like some of the stuff he did with Gary Oldman. Now, Gary Oldman's a good director, but he does like kitchen sink stuff. He's one of the best directors that we have. He's also my favorite actor. But 
because of what he did with Sid Vicious. But uh, Gary Oldman, you know, I don't know if he does horror films, but he definitely would be perfect for Gerald Oldman III. And he, he's basically who I wrote it for. So I hope he accepts it. Um, you know, Daniel Day, of course, is about as good. But if I had to choose between Daniel Day and Gary Oldman, I would choose Gary Oldman. Daniel Day-Lewis is, is an amazing actor, but I would, I would probably choose Gary Oldman. Those cars are sometimes crappy. So we're back at it again, and we are headed towards Fort Worth. And I think this might be Westport Parkway. I, I, I thought Keller Haslett back there, but it's saying Westport Parkway now on ways. So regardless of what it's called, it's a neat little area of Fort Worth slash Keller slash the area that I'm in. Okay. Which is by the North Freeway right here. You can find me in the produce section of your local grocery store. So I'm going inside to give it to the security. Doesn't want to come out and meet. I guess he's probably packaging things. Yeah, I know. I just want to say this real quick. There is a bird that laid a bunch of eggs. And this was months ago, the first time the bird nested in my balcony. One of the birds didn't make it. So I found the bird. It was a little fledgling. No, no feathers or anything. But there was like it was like fuzziness around it. I guess there was it was growing, and I accidentally just kind of stepped on. It. I didn't know what it was. It looked like a little piece of hair. For a minute, I thought it was a spider, and it kind of went like this. I gave it water, and I put it back into the nest, and I don't know for sure if it made it. It might have. But I saw two of the fledglings fly off. This was a long time ago. The bird is at it again. So he's got more there. He's nested again. He's pooped all over the place and everything. There was one of them that I was worried about. But I'll, I don't know. You know, I didn't. I haven't, I haven't figured it out. You know, I'm kind of thinking to myself, oh my God. But it was interesting because one day I went out there and I looked up into the nest and there was these two fledglings, feathers and everything, real proud, looking out, you know. We made it, we're ready. Eventually they just flew off. So now the mother bird has come back or maybe it's the fledglings, I don't know. But she's in there, you know, in the nest almost like every day. So and I'll drop this one off. people out there vlogging Walt Disney World and Pigeon Forge and there's other things going on in the world but oh well do you know uh, I've got a I got a person that wants me to drop this off with security what's the name for it? it's Lonnie yeah. Is that you? No, that's, that's not guy. you. Okay. <laughs> All right. I just take him as food when it shows up. All right. There you go. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. I guess that's how it works on that one. I mean, you know, if you have a problem, 
people want to, you know, kind of insult you, belittle you, they'll do is, what people will do is they'll go after, they'll go after your confidence, enemy, whoever that may be, if you can't get your confidence, you can't win, you keep going, you keep going, you keep going, there's no way you'll lose, they might try to hurt you physically, and, you know, hurting you physically does some damage, and eventually you heal from that, and you become stronger. But what they'll really go after is they'll go after your confidence. The wind will blow. God will be involved too. God is always involved. He'll interrupt. He wants your full attention at all times. You gotta fight him too. Um, because he wants his way. You gotta keep going anyway. Hopefully God doesn't do anything to your confidence, but he will control the wind. And that's a hard thing to, uh, to deal with because it's the enemy of the filmmaker. Is the mother effing wind. But don't let it get to your confidence and keep on going. You have confidence, you'll take over anything and respect. I like those hay bales. You see them all over Texas. I thought it'd be cool in the werewolf film though, going back to the werewolf film, to have a bunch of hay bales ignite in one sequence and it just slowly burns the entire farm down. I don't know how I'm gonna have to write it in there and get to this sequence. I gotta do it one little sequence at a time. So the next step, I always tell you the next step that I'm working on and then we'll vlog the whole thing eventually is it's pretty red um, it, it's going to probably be the arrival of Gerald Oldman the third to Grace Lippin's farm so you see the big L at the entrance of the farm the long road winding road and then he comes to the farmhouse and he knocks on the door it's a nice house it's, it's, it's you know it's modern day house you know a really nice you know closed circuit cameras and all that stuff and you, we see some of that as they're rolling in on the uber <laughs> so just gonna have the uber drop them off there kind of like a almost kind of like a filming location they have their cameras and all this stuff because they're, they're for sure that grace is the is the werewolf which later we learn differently um, and they arrive and basically Gerald knocks on the door with John Blacksmith and Rainey answers the door. So Rainey answers the door and Grace isn't there. And they just have, a, you know, a brief conversation with her. They leave and they go back to their motel and discuss kind of what their next plan and then we get to the next scene where they're going to start trying to trail gray slipping so they'll, they'll know when to get there to interview him then we get to that scene where the interview is they talk about the tattoo to him and eventually he tells them you know because they are running this werewolf show they're vlogging and he's been on ufc he's been in the spotlight so he, he'll, you know, he's, he's thinking about doing his own cooking show with Rainy. They may have done already, sent one up, a cooking show for a platform, you know, web series. And finally he says to him, you know, I actually did not come up with this tattoo idea. I did not come up with that. And they finally, you know, he, he, he gets, they get to the point where like, well, who came up with the idea? And he says, Rainy, Rainy Love, you ever heard of her? Basically, it's like, you know, rock stars, not Courtney Love, not really that, that you know, this is like a, a B film, you know, this, not even B films, you know, she's like a, not a local artist, but she did some touring and it's kind of a, a name, like a punk name. Um, and this story, of course, 
there's only one Courtney Love, but this is this her character's name's Rainy Love, and it's like a name that she took on for whatever reason. She didn't care about Courtney Love. She still kept the name anyway, even though it probably hurt her career because her name was too much like Courtney Love. And she says, uh, uh, I mean, I'm sorry. Uh, he says to them, you know, Rainy was the one that came up with the tattoo. And he knows immediately at that point that it's a female lycanthrope. It's a female werewolf that they're dealing with. They go back and they do another game plan. Now they have to go and try to trail Rainy. But then that Grace doesn't like that. That makes Grace mad. So eventually they wait for the full moon and they, you know, you got to realize that when, when they wait for the full moon the first time, they pull Grace out into the moonlight to see if he changes. And that's when he's like, you guys are ridiculous, you know, and then they, 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 they confront him with the tattoo and all this stuff. And that's when he tells them, you know, I didn't come up with the idea for the, the tattoo drawing that was rainy love, you know my beloved Listen, let, me, let me tell you something about Adam the Woo and Jordan the Lion and, and vlogging they're not always going to be hot stuff this was last year was Jordan the Lion's best year ever let me tell you something it's not always going to be that way yeah they've got 30,000 views I think Adam the Woo has like 40 or 50,000 views just today or something like that I don't know how many um, I think there's sometimes he even has up to a million views, but it's not always going to be that way. Okay. It will not always be that way. There's some cool hay bales too. Just looking at different hay bales or the werewolf movie kind of thing. It's not always going to be one person, right? It's not everybody's going to hog it up. Everybody gets a piece of the nachos, right? Everybody gets a piece of the pie. But if they know a certain person is, is going to be very successful and they team up with them, there's a better chance for them later, right? Because they want to do what's wise for them, right? They want to, they want to be, get on board and not just be like, you know, all balls to the, to the wall kind of thing. Only me, you know, you know, it's not really that they can, they can, of course they can keep doing their little things that they're doing. People will probably be interested in them, but they're not going to be hot shots for the remainder of time. Okay. It's not going to go on always. It might happen through their lifetime. I, I don't know. They've been doing it for quite a bit of time and they may move on to, to other endeavors, but it's not, and none of them are going to be professional race car drivers as good as the, you know, the best professional race car drivers that are out there, but they can drive go-karts in a very mean way. So see now that I met or I saw, I mean, I saw Adam the Woo and them, I realized not just to keep the shot like that, for B-roll, but to kind of show them my life, you know. I started off with B-roll. Not really, though. I'm not really telling the truth. I started off vlogging with Pigeon Pigeon 1. That's what I did. I vlogged the whole time. Um, I was vlogging then, probably whenever he was starting. The only difference is I moved to Maine and started writing. And I got back to vlogging later. So, you know, it's a major difference. So we're going to be crossing some fireworks, and I think of Drunken Fireworks uh, by Stephen King, but that's just because I just do that kind of stuff. I mean, I think of the word fireworks and then a recent story that was written not too long called Drunken Fireworks, but we're going to pass by it, and I'm probably going to show it. I don't know if I'm going to buy any fireworks this year, but I would not operate fireworks while drunk. Is what is the the point of the little message and commercial value advertisement, whatever you want to call it, of the Stephen King story? 
because you can get killed. So don't don't get drunk and mess with fireworks. Fireworks can be very dangerous. I'm okay with a sparkler, maybe a bottle rocket or whatever, you know, maybe a, some blackjacks. But just be careful. Now, Gary Oldman and other actors, they don't have to help me. But they can they can subscribe first. They can help really anybody that they want. I would be very grateful if Gary Oldman would accept the werewolf movie as crazy as it sounds. Like I remember like Kubrick made Full Metal Jacket and he used a, a book called Short Timers by Gustav. And that was a very crazy, zany book. You know, a, a, a soldier going after an NVC or the Viet Cong or the NVA, whatever you want to call them, okay, with a BB gun was not in Full Metal Jacket. No soldier had a BB gun in Full Metal Jacket, but it's in the book. So you can take a script that's zany, a little far-fetched, you can do wonderful things with them. So it'd be wonderful if he would jump on board. And I and my family would be very appreciative because I'm a huge Gary Ullman fan. It's called Grace. It's a werewolf film. If you noticed, I said Gary Oldman. And it, and it kind of way that, that he says it and I think that I couldn't think of anyone better for the werewolf hunter than the one and only Gary Oldman. But, you know, I know he is probably as famous as Laurence Olivier was. And it would just be a wonderful, zany time to play werewolf hunter. I want to do something great with my life before all of this is over before everything just dwindles. I want to do something great. I know that he played Dracula brilliantly, but this is a werewolf hunter. And I think he takes his time to catch this werewolf. But I don't know how I would send him the script. Now, if he gets this message, because it's my werewolf movie directed to Gary Oldman is probably the title of this one. Even though I do all this other stuff. Forgive me, the show is about humanity, but I do include my stories. Leave a comment. Have your people leave a comment. It goes right to my email. That's all you have to do. Just tap on it and leave a comment. And we will be off catching werewolves. Or the lycanthrope. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. So anyway, I just wanted to get that out there. Eventually, I do want to do a movie about alcohol. Eventually, I want to do a movie about alcoholism. Alcoholics. And I, this werewolf film, in a way, is a substitution, a sublimation, a, a form of that 
monster called alcohol, the monster known as the alcohol, the alcoholic, the alcoholism monster, however you want to put it. Rainy, of course, exhibits a strange draw that causes her to go out in the night and walk. And that's a reaction to her putting away of that alcohol from her past as a rock and roll artist. As she tried to go out and pursue rock and roll, you know, rock and rollism, you know. She tried to go out there and, and be the rock star. And she failed. I mean, she, she's selling Bill Jack dog food in a fictional town called Barksville. Look at that turkey right there. It's a nice little village thing. It's really cool. These people have turkeys moving right there. It's pretty funny. Um, but like I was saying, you know, she's selling Bill Jack, which is kind of, you know, on Doubletree Drive in the middle of BFE, Texas, which is not far from Justin Sam Reynolds Road and Justin. And she basically has to come to terms with the fact that she is just a saleswoman with Bill Jack dog food. And her husband's an all time champion at UFC. Oh, yeah. Hitchcockin'. And the thing is, is that that's what is the great thing about it. She gave up alcoholism. But somewhere down the line, in the middle of Barksville, she got bit by a werewolf late at night on one of her walks that she takes to get away from the addiction of alcoholism. And it turned her into a shape-shifting lycanthrope that caused her to thirst the blood of men and humanity. Thirst for blood and flesh. And when the moon is full, she transforms into a monstrous wolf, which we never see, only the shadow of her, as she takes down her enemy, mankind. It's a good story. So basically, that's what I want. Now, if I have to play the werewolf hunter, I'd be glad to do it. And if you want to just produce it, that's fine too. You don't have to play Gerald Oldman III, werewolf hunter. But you being my favorite actor, I think it would be cool for you to be a part of it in some way or another. I don't know. I, I, I like, man, I like, you know, great, uh, what is it, State of Grace with Sean Penn. And, yeah, I mean, and also, of course, The Professional, which is like over the top. When I was in Hollywood, though, you, you were criticized by acting teachers. Like, don't do it like Gary Oldman. And they, were, they were tell me, you know, Gary Oldman, he goes to these places, like, don't try to do it that way, you know. But regardless, I think the best, I think what Neil by Mouth was brilliant. State of Grace was, was brilliant. Uh, but Dracula, my, my God, by far one of our best performances of the century, you know. And there are the Alamo fireworks. And that's my vlog for the fireworks of June 28th. Alamo fireworks. Buy them. They go boof. I mean, Justin, there's more fireworks there than Justin. There's USA fireworks. You can kind of see it. If you squint real hard, go down there and buy some fireworks. There's the American flag. Just boom. All the way. Cool little, little train right here. Oh, another train right there. Whoa, he almost killed me. That guy's a nut. Uh, that is a really cool train, too. We got some rain. We're going to do the windshield wiper kind of thing. Just So today, June 28th, around 7.20 or so, 
I invented the slang word hitchcocking. Okay? That's when a bird flies very close to the camera's lens. There's dead bodies buried in there probably somewhere. Some kind of zombie. The guy's a butthole right now. Big fan. And it's called hitchcocking. I just invented it today on June 28th. So everybody one day will be saying they went out hitchcocking. Hitchcocking on the old butthole, the old smartphone. We shop, we live, we work. Most golf and we stay. Actually, not that many people golf, but some golf in this area, maybe. So this story about a lycanthrope, or a lycanthrope, right? Because they can't pronounce it, but lycanthrope, or lycanthropy, or the lycanthrope, from the Lacanian god, or actually it was a Lacanian king who met Jupiter and occurred the curse of the lycanthrope, or the lycanthropy was invented by me.